a special person named Marisha. I met Marisha for the first time in uh, February when I came here for an interview to be a resident manager. And she was just open arms and just so full of love. When you see Marisha, you just think of love, like God's love. She's just awesome. She's just awesome. Um, Marisha is originally from Washington State. And she's been here on staff at Faith Farm for a year now as the women's in intake coordinator. So she's on the phone all day talking to women, hurting troubled women all over the world. And I'm uh, really happy to have her. Um, she did some biblical studies in Arizona and at the Grand Canyon University. And uh, one of her pastime hobbies is snowboarding along with uh, drinking coffee. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, she loves animals. She's got a big, big dog named Capone. You mess with Marisha, you mess with Capone. <laughs> anyway, please help me give Marisha a big, warm welcome. I'm really excited to share my message. It is something um, God's been putting on my heart, like, really, really heavily um, this past years since I've worked here, um, and that's loving people, like, even people that are, like, a little bit harder to love, like, loving equally, huh. um, and so my message is called Receiving Love Than Becoming It, um, and it, my, met, or my scripture is First John 4, 19, we love because he first loved us, um, and it was awesome writing the sermon, too, um, because this is something God's been putting on my heart, but writing a sermon, I want to encourage everybody to, to do it because um, it just takes it even deeper into who you are too. And I want to thank Pastor for letting me be up here today and um, doing the minister's class um, and pouring into us and um, really enjoying it. And um, so thank you for that. But um, I would like to pray um, first and talk to my father, our father, our father. God, I just thank you so much for what you've done in my life and what you're doing in the lives here, God. Um, I just pray, Lord, that you clear my mind of anything that's mine and um, all my words, that it just flow from you, God. I don't want any of this to be from me, just from you, God. And um, just take us deeper into your heart, Lord. Your love is just what changes everything, God. Um, so we just thank you for that, that you do give freely. You don't give your love in pieces, that you just lavish it on us all the time. Um, Lord, and help us to see that and understand it even more tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Um, so I remember when I first started um, my relationship with the Lord. Um, I was raised in church and went to Christian school for a while um, as a kid um, and then fell away. Um, so I, like, I knew God stuff, but... Um, not the relationship part, and um, so I remember though when that relationship part was coming, was happening, and I was in jail, go figure, and um, just really at a just lost and broken place. I was in and out. I can't even count how many times I was in jail, and I was just hurting so so bad, and I didn't want to do this anymore. I was sick of it. I was sick of who I was. I just hated myself so so much. And um, and God is just so there for the brokenhearted. And um, so I'll never forget. Oh, yeah. So one of my first things was, okay, I want to change. That always has to be the first thing. We have to want to change. Um, and I was like, God, what do I do? And so my first choice was to, I could either hang out with the people that were, you know, glorifying the drugs still, or I could hang out with the women that um, were seeking the Lord and, um, they looked a little more happy, so I went and chilled with those guys. And um, I'll never forget my friend um, Siobhan. She was this redhead, tatted up girl with this Bible in her arm all the time. And she said to me, she's like, do you know we're supposed to love God more than our husbands, wives, and children? And this was like something, you know, I was raised in church. I've heard that before. But God revealed it to me in such a revelation that tears just started flowing. And I was like... Yeah, this is what I've been missing my whole entire life. This is this is what I need. I need God, and um, 
man, words are so powerful. I'm so thankful that she, and we're not in contact anymore. I don't know even know where she is, but for that girl to share those words with me, it really spiraled me into a different place of my life. Words are so powerful. And um, so, okay, I need to, I need God. I need to love God. So, but what is love? I mean, at that time, love to me was, you know, buy me drugs, buy me a drink. Like, you know, that's what love to me meant back then. Give me money, whatever, you know. And I knew that was wrong. So I had to really see what love was according to God. Um, and then also, who's God? Like, I didn't know. You know, we, we say, put your trust in God. Well, how do you do that when you don't know him? And so the journey began. And I had the time while I was in there, so, you know, might as well get into the Word. Um, and so 1 Corinthians 13, 4, 8, the definition of love. Here we go. Love is patient, kind, doesn't envy, it doesn't boast, is not proud, it doesn't dishonor others, it is not self-seeking, it is not easily angered, it keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices in truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails. Like, that's a lot. Like, when we say we love somebody, like, we have to look at all of that. Like, that's hardcore. Um, John 15, 13, there's no greater love than one to lay down one's life for their friends. Like, that's really hardcore. I've never done that. I don't know about you guys, but... Uh, and then Luke 6, 27 through 28, but love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you and pray for those who mistreat you. Ouch. Like, this is God saying this, not me. Like, so don't get mad at me. Like, this is God's <laughs> stuff here. Um, Luke 6, 32, if you love those who love you, what benefit is that to you? Even the heathen do that. Big deal. Like, we're called to a higher standard. Um, and then Matthew 22, 37 through 39, Jesus replies, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment, and the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. Is Raj here? Oh, he's, he needs to Yeah, so Raj, we've got to tell him. He needs to love his neighbor as me. <laughs> the next question <laughs> little hater <laughs> this next question he says I'm his little sister that he never wanted <laughs> God's still working on him we'll pray for him uh, the next question who is God and how do I get to know him um, like with any relationship you know with a person that you're trying to get to know you have to spend time that person um spending time like in the word and getting to know god like that was huge for me i mean i knew like so when i went to a 12-month faith-based recovery program actually it was like 13 months for me i was special and <laughs> <laughs> so i was like i have the time you know i might as well i want to know what's in here i want to know who god is so i started from the beginning and started in genesis went all the way through to revelation and it just blew me away, you know, in the Old Testament, who God was and his just unending grace that just every time we kept turning away that he would just be right there scooping us back up. And it also gave me a really healthy fear for the Lord, too. Um, and the more I spent time with God, the more I understand him and know his voice when he speaks to me. Um, building a relationship with him is kind of hilarious sometimes some of the stuff he's just like his ways really are higher than our ways so when I was in jail there was I had a really awesome cellie for a really long time praise the Lord because that can be really hard um but like a week before I was getting released I was I got switched with this other girl and I was really going through it she I was on the bottom bunk she was on the top bunk and um, I'm not even joking. I mean, she ripped her socks off and threw them in the sink that I brushed my teeth in. And she was picking her feet on the top bunk, and I was on the bottom bunk. And I'm like, oh, my God. And so I jumped on my bunk bed, and I grabbed my Bible, and I opened it up. God is hilarious. And I'm not even joking. It was Matthew 7. 
don't judge others or that's the way God will judge you. And I was just like, okay, God, I'm so sorry. And it, he just, it was when that repentance came that, you know, okay, I see what you're, you're saying, God. He really showed me her through his eyes. Um, and my heart broke for her. And she started opening up and sharing um, stuff about her kids. And it was heartbreaking. And he just gave me a love for her that I couldn't do on my own. Like, we can't do all that love stuff on our own. We need his love to flow through us. Um, so I'm thankful for those moments, though, that I've really got to spend time with him and trust him and know that his ways are so much better and his love is just, yeah, so much higher. Um, so knowing him and knowing what true love is, we see the cross. Um, who here has had, like, a cross revelation? Okay, two. That's awesome. So maybe. Okay. So, well, that's kind of my own terminology. Um, it's like, yeah, well, it's like, let me explain. So, man, like, because we read about it, you know, the cross and all that kind of stuff, but how deep is it in our heart? Like, I'll never forget, um, it was, I was at Jubilee House, and it was Good Friday, the year 2012, and I went to church, and um, they were showing a documentary of, uh, it's called The Sacrifice. And um, it is of the Jewish people um, doing the sacrificial lamb um, for their sins. And so we're watching it, and I'm just like, you know, whatever, this is kind of weird. But um, here comes this lamb, and they have a leash around it, and they're just like pulling this little lamb, this cute little lamb. I'm sorry, Vicki, you're going to cry. But they're pulling this cute little lamb, and, <laughs> and its knees start to buckle, and it does not want to go. And they, so they just grabbed it and ripped it and put it on the ground. And they held its neck down and they slit its throat. And this blood just starts pouring out. And I was just, I lost it. Yep. I was just like, once I saw that blood, like, that was for me. Like, Jesus did that for me. And I just, it was the, the revelation of that, like, wow, this is love. Like, this is real. And... And it changed me, like, okay, that I'm sold out. Like this is this is what's up. Like you love me, like whatever. I'm going. If you say go, let's go. And seriously, all the love that you've given me, I'm gonna give to other people freely because it's not about me anymore. I know that I'm loved and I want everybody else to know how much they're loved too. Because in the end, what really matters? You know? Um so yeah, you're loved and <laughs> Um, and oh, by the way, you're never going to die. We, those of us that are in Christ, like, we have, like, God is preparing a place for us. And how amazing is that? And not only the afterlife, like, right now, we can live in freedom and victory in Jesus' name. Like, right now, we can walk. We can be content in all circumstances in Christ. I mean, we can walk in the fruit of the Spirit. And he Right now, like, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, self-control, right now, all of it. That's what his word says. So let's claim it. Let's do this. We can. His love has been a journey. Like, yeah, she was saying, I've, I'm from Washington State. God moved me from Washington to Idaho, from Idaho to Arizona, from Arizona to um, Florida here. And it's fun. Like, life with God is fun. Like, I used to, I remember I could never imagine life without drugs and alcohol. Like, I thought it would be so boring, but it's not. Like, life is truly, like, this is what's up. Like, life with Him is awesome. And it's like, you know, if you really do, like, I have my moments, you know, I miss my family. My family is basically the farthest you can go, unless if they were in Alaska. But... You know, I miss them so, so much. But Jesus is seriously worth it all. And and wherever he wants you to go, just go. Because it, it, there's seriously no greater cause than the cause of Christ. 1 Corinthians 13, 1 through 3. If I speak with human eloquence and angelic ecstasy, but don't love, I'm nothing but the creaky of a rusty gate. If I speak God's word with power, revealing all of his mysteries and making everything plain as day, and if I have faith that says to a mustard, 
no, not a mustard, a mountain jump, and it jumps. But I don't have love. I am nothing. If I give everything I own to the poor and even go to the stake to be burned as a martyr, but I don't love, I've gotten nowhere. So no matter what I say, what I believe, and what I do, I'm bankrupt without love. Like, don't miss this, guys. Like, it's about love, and it's always been about love. Even from the beginning in the garden, God created us to love us, to walk with him. Like, we can enjoy each other. So, and let's be aware of our heart's intentions, too. Like, especially, like, us, like, teaching and all this kind of stuff. Um, but everybody, really, like, we have to be aware of our intentions of our heart. Because, man, truth has to be spoken in love. Um, you know, if there's been times where I know the right thing to say according to God's word, but my heart's been frustrated or you know, irritable or whatever. So I seriously have to check myself and step away and pray for a minute or even don't say anything at all. Like, cause that can hurt people. Mm -hmm. And it has, I know I've been hurt before. I felt like I was, you know, whipped in the face with the Bible and, and you know, we have to, I don't ever want to do that to somebody. You know, I want to make sure God help us. God help me that every time I'm, you know, speaking God's word, that it's coming straight from a place of love. Um, so yeah, after truly receiving God's love like that, we become it. We can't give what we don't have. But if we receive his amazing love, like that's what it is, it's amazing, we naturally want to tell others. And not just tell them, but show them. Love is an action. Love does. Um, even if we don't go around, you know, telling everybody about Jesus every second of every day, you know, we can show them Jesus by how we love them, you know. And it's not just in church. It's not just even at our job. It's when we go to the grocery store. We go put gas in our car when we're, you know, walking by somebody in the sidewalk. Um, you know, smile. Smile at somebody. You never know what a smile can actually do. Um, when I was living in downtown Phoenix, um, they have a very high homeless population there. And um, one day I was getting groceries and um, I was putting my groceries away in the back of my car and um, I had my head down and this man approached me and he said excuse me ma'am and um, I just looked I was like what huh you know I looked up and smiled and and I'm not even joking you and I know God will never let me forget this um, but the guy like literally stepped back and was like whoa he was like thank you for smiling at me He's like, most people just shudder when they see me. And that right there opened up my eyes, and it opened up a door for me to share with him how much he is, is loved. So, how much love, pure love, are you giving out? It is something to think about because maybe you're not fully receiving it. If that's the case, ask. Ask God to reveal his love for you in ways you can understand. I mean, he already did it on the cross. There's no better picture of what love looks like than the cross. The giving of his son for us that maybe, just maybe, we would choose him. But it doesn't just stop there. Start looking around and thanking God for supplying all your needs and not all your wants. He truly showers us every day with blessings if we choose to see and receive it as that. Or we can just look the other way and complain. But I choose to receive God's love and give it to people wherever I go. And I'm not saying it's easy, but I'm not going to make an excuse why I can't love so-and-so because they did this to me. Because I did a lot of horrible things in my addiction, and, and God loved me anyways. We sometimes have to be intentional and purpose to love. And that's not being fake. When Jesus carried his cross to be nailed to it, he wasn't being fake. He was doing it out of love for us. We can be intentional loving people that are harder to love because we can look at the cross. There is a bigger picture in it all. Um, so have you received God's love? Or are you going through the motions? Um, you'll know because if you're going through the motions, it's a struggle. And the struggle is real. So if you want, ask God for his love. 
the love revelation. He has already given us his son if we just receive him and receive him in full. His love will fill you up enough to pour out. Um, and my prayer for you guys is Ephesians 3, 16 through 19. It's actually Paul's prayer, but I'm going to steal it for you guys tonight. I pray that from his glorious unlimited resources, he will empower you with inner strength through his spirit. Then Christ will make his home in your hearts as you trust in him. Your roots will grow down into God's love and keep you strong. And may you have the power to understand, as all God's people should, how wide, how long, how high, and how deep his love is. May you experience the love of Christ through it as though it is too great to understand fully. Then you will be made complete with all the fullness of life and power that comes from God. So that song, Gravity, that we played tonight, I just, I think about that and you said like what really matters in the end you know we're not promised tomorrow so if you can just like imagine being called up right now and you know you look down and you just pass the clouds the stars outer space and you're just there with God like what really matters in that moment and I know for me it's one is I want to know him you know I want to when I'm there like we know each other, you know, I don't want it to be weird, like, we know each other, we hang out, like, all the time, like, we're together all the time, I'm not scared of him, he's my God, he's my Father, he's my Lord, he's my life, he's the lover of my soul, he's all of that to me, um, and then also, looking down, like, if we were up there looking down, and you could never go back, what, what would your wish be? I know mine would be how much I loved his people down there. You know, they would say to God, I did my best to love your people and to share with your people all of the love that you gave to me so freely. I don't care about anything else, but I just want to give back to your people because I want them to know you like I know you. I want them to be here with us right now. You know, what really matters in the end? So... I love you guys. <laughs>